Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, hope you all had a great New Year. And uh, yeah, see, for some people, you know, it's just one more day. For some people, it's special. Uh, Bible tells, you know, if you want to consider it a special day, any day a special day, you're free to do so. If you are wanting to treat every day as special, therefore every day the same, you're free to do so, all right? And uh, we usually, you know, work around a theme every year. Uh, it is just, you know, we are free to take anything. But whatever we sense that this is what the Spirit is highlighting this year, we take that so that we concentrate on it, you know, we look at it um, in a deeper sense. So we declare this year as the reality of love, light and life. Um, in some sense, it's a continuation of the series that we did uh, you know, last year, called the new wineskin, right? So it's a continuation of that. Um, the main verse uh, we have selected John seventeen. In John seventeen, in the last verse in the Passion Translation, John seventeen. 26. I have revealed to them who you are. I will continue to make you even more real to them so that they may experience the same endless love that you have for me. For your love will now live in them even as I live in them. See, I want to uh, highlight the word reality I will continue to make you even more real to them right so the word reality is a very important word in scripture the Greek word is the word aletheia you know before we started father's house we had a fellowship you know IT fellowship called Aletheia that it, it then got transformed into you know father's house uh, the word Aletheia is translated as the word truth in our Bibles but it the meaning is reality you know so many scriptures right Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And um, in John 1, we find uh, he's full of grace and truth. And then all these verses, uh, so I want you to replace the word truth with the word reality. And, and read those scriptures and see how it appears very different. You know? We are thinking this as reality. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Matrix or Matrix, however you call it. You know, uh, in that movie, there is this computer program in which people are just programs and, and they think that is reality, but there is not reality. Most of what we are living right now is not the reality. Right, and uh, we are caught up in our sense knowledge, and whatever we touch and see and hear and feel, and we think, and our perception. Uh, I've I've said this so many times, right? Our perception, 
our perception is our reality. Our perception is our reality. This is a huge, huge, huge statement. You know, how we see things is our reality. But there is the reality. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Right? He is the reality. Jesus. Jesus is the reality. And the moment we say Jesus, we are talking about his relationship with the Father and the Spirit and his relationship with creation. So he is the God-man, right? He is 100% God, 100% man. So Jesus is the reality of who God is. And Jesus is the reality of who we are as humans. So he is the reality. And I don't know how to say this. Um, let me let me put it this way. Come with me to John chapter 1. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of Jesus is full of grace and reality. And verse 16 says, And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and reality came through Jesus Christ. Well, law was given through Moses, but grace and reality, right, came through Jesus. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. So Jesus is the reality and he is the only reality. Christ is our reality. See, law demands, but there is no reality. The law says, love God. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Law will say all those things. Law will say, honor your parents. Law will say, obey your parents. Law will say, um, love everyone. You know, do this, do that. But there is no reality in the law. That's why law couldn't do what it was supposed to do. It just demanded, but it never supplied. In biblical language, in Hebrews, we find law is a shadow. But Jesus is the substance. Christ is the substance. Christ is substance. Christ is reality. So, um, we are talking about love, light and life, right? How this reality of the love and reality of life and reality of the light will, you know, all these three things are intertwined. Um, Jesus is face to face with the Father, right? We, John 1, in the beginning was the word, that word was with God and the word was God. Verse 4, in him was Zoe, and the Zoe was the light of men. The word was pros, face to face. There you have love. And then in him was Zoe, life. And that life was light and to men. Are you getting what I'm saying? Love, relationship, face to face. The word was face to face with the father. That is the reality of relationship. And that relationship in him, right? He knows the father. So Jesus has Zoe in him, eternal life in him. That is the reality of life. And that life is light unto men. So love, light and life. So the, the reality of love the reality of life and the reality of the light is in the person of Jesus. Jesus Christ. 
So God did not give us life. God did not give us love. God does not give us things. God does not uh, give you things, right? Say, I'm giving you a phone. I'm giving you an Apple pencil. I'm giving you a kerchief. I'm giving you a Bible. There's so many things. But God doesn't give us things. Uh, he gives us Christ. Christ is everything for us. This is not a mental game. I'm telling you, this is not a mental game. See, you should understand something. If you get this, your life will never be the same. When we say truth, in common terms, we would understand it as sincerity. Right? Or, if you're a little bit theological, you might understand as doctrines. Jesus said, okay, in John chapter 4, uh, you know that famous verse to the woman at the well, right? Verse 23, chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth and in reality. True worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in reality. My goodness. The whole purpose that Christ is in you he says, is to make the Father even more real to you. When the love of the Father, when the triune dance is not real, is not real, everything else becomes reality for us. Our pain becomes reality. That's the worst thing. When triune dance is not a reality, our pain becomes a reality. Our disappointment becomes our reality. Our offense becomes our reality. My goodness, when our pain and our offense becomes our reality, it, when we start seeing through that, it obscures everything. It hides the face of the Father from us. And then we start dying. Why we are not able to experience love, light and life? Because... For us, that is not reality. For us, this has become reality. Pain has become reality. Death has become reality. Separation has become our reality, which is not. All these things, you know, is, is just an illusion. It's an illusion. It's an illusion in our mind that we are believing. Separation is an illusion in our mind that we are believing. And when we believe that as a reality, it causes pain and death. See, in Matrix, in that movie, they go into that program, into that Matrix, and they fight there, the other programs. The reality is in Zion, okay? It's really interesting how they have named. Okay? The reality is in Zion. And help, uh, who is helping Neo within the Matrix? Trinity. Mm, who loves Neo? Trinity loves Neo. And, yeah. So, um, so you have Zion, in which is the reality, and then you have the matrix, which is an illusion. But people are thinking that as the reality. And Neo goes inside the matrix the first time. So many things happens to him, and his mind plays the game thinking making matrix as the reality okay he gets hit but he really doesn't get hit but because his mind believes the matrix to be the reality he gets hit and really he gets hit here also are you getting what i'm saying and finally, what happens is 
Trinity, you know, loves uh, Neo, basically kisses him back to life. And what happens at that point is Neo is awakened. And he is able to manipulate the Matrix. And they fight. They, they shoot. And he just stops all the bullets. Because he knows that it's not real. It is just a program. He can manipulate. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's how Jesus operated into this world. When he got into this world, he was operating from a different reality. Therefore, he never acknowledged death. Whenever people died, he kept saying, they are sleeping. Oh, Lazarus is sleeping. Oh, Jairus' daughter is sleeping, sleeping. I, I, death was never a reality for Jesus. And not only that, you know, water. We cannot walk on water. That is our reality, right? That's the matrix illusion. But Jesus walks on water. Jesus multiplies bread. Jesus speaks to the fish. Jesus speaks to the trees. Jesus speaks to the wind. And everything gets changed. He is able to literally play with this whole so-called matrix or the seen world. Because he is living from a different reality. For him, father is the reality. We are so sucked into this world, into the systems of this world, into the Babylonian thinking. So much so our mind is in prison by these formulas and systems and how things work. And oh, we need this, we need that. Oh, my bank balance is going down and we start getting pressurized. Oh, all these things happen. We lost our job. That's it. My future is gone. Oh, this person is not talking to me anymore. That's it. My world is gone. See how this whole thing makes our world real to us. Everything and everything affects us because we are not awakened to the reality. And it goes on to say, Verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and reality and truth. Yes, we should learn to engage with the father as a reality. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in reality. In Christ is a reality of who God is. Come with me to John 8. I'll tell you something. Verse 19. They said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You neither know, you know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill, kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath. Mm. You are from beneath. See, when you, there is a lower reality, whatever we are living is a lower reality. And uh, whatever we see and hear and feel and touch, we, we are thinking is the reality. That is to live from beneath. You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins for if you do not you will die. You will die in your sins if you do not believe that I am. Actually, the word he is not there. That's why it's in italics in New King James. If you do not believe that I am, you know this word I am, where you find this word I am, is the great I am. When Moses said, what is your name? 
how can I go and talk to people? You know, uh, uh, from a burning bush, some voice came. I can't say. I have to tell. What's your name? I am that I am. Right? Look at the Passion Translation. John chapter 8, uh, verse 24. Jesus spoke up and said, You are all from the earth. I am from above. Verse 23. I am not from this world like you are. That is why I have told you that you will all die in your sins if you fail to believe that I am who I am. Whoa. I am who I am. If you do not believe I am, I am as what? I am as what? I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the light. I am the great I am. If you do not believe that I am, then you will all die. Then look at the word. You know, he, he, that is verse 24, right? Verse 32. You shall know the reality and the reality will set you free. Did you get it? You will die if you do not believe that I am. I am the reality. You shall know the reality and the reality will set you free. You shall know the aletheia and aletheia will set you free. See, when you do not know the reality, you are in bondage. You are in bondage to the systems of this world. You are, bonded, you are in bondage to your sense knowledge. You are in bondage to your pain. You are in bondage to people's opinion. You are in bondage to what devil is doing. You are, you know, you are living, you are from beneath, right? But I am from above. How I am able to manipulate, how I am able to change everything around me is because I know the reality. I know the Father. I am. Right? The whisper of evil says, I am not. But the voice of truth says, I am. So when you know that reality, my goodness, the reality will set you free. We need to go for reality. See, one more verse. Mm, come with me to John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the reality, and the zoe. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. <gasps> Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. It's sufficient for us. Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. That's how he goes on to say, verse 12, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. It's very, very interesting. This verse says, because I go to my father, you shall do greater works. Because I go to my father. We all wish Jesus stayed on earth so that he can all help us, right? If that has happened, we would all be standing in queue right from Jerusalem till Chennai. The queue would have been so long for us to go and meet Jesus so that he can do something for us because he is the only one who knows the Father. But Jesus said, hey, I put my love in you and my father's love, which is myself, 
I will come and dwell in you. I will be the reality. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the life. I will be your life. I will be your reality. I will be the union. You are inseparably united, just like how the Father is in me and I am in the Father and the works that I do is not the works that I do, but the Father in me who works and he who believes in me, you know, I shall dwell in him and greater works he shall do. So he wants each and every one of us to operate like Christ. And that's the reason he went to the Father and he poured the Spirit. And when the Spirit was poured, we shall know that we are in him and that he is in us. My goodness, when we understand this union and when this union becomes a reality, greater works is the result. We need not even struggle for the greater works. Greater works will be in inevitable result when we understand union. When the union becomes a reality, greater works is the result. Verse 16, I'll pray the Father and he'll give you another paracletus, helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit, see Jesus is the reality. Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Aletheia, Spirit of reality. The spirit of reality whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. What will the spirit of truth do? Chapter 16 verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of Aletheia has come, he will guide you into all reality. The spirit of reality will guide you into all reality. Truth is reality. So you find a truth in scripture which is embodied in the person of Jesus. You should understand this is, this is so important. You know, you can by heart every verse in the Bible but still miss out the reality. But when this verse becomes the word, becomes Christ in you, and that's where you have latched onto reality. And see, that is what we read the same thing in uh, the newer service, you know. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 in the message version verse 6 and 7 my counsel for you is simple and straightforward just go ahead with what you have been given you received Christ Jesus now live him now not live like him, not live in him, right? Now, not live for him, now live him. Are you understanding what Christian life is all about? Christian life is not you living for Christ or living like Christ or living in Christ. It is living him. You received Christ Jesus. Now live him. Yeah, it's time for you to live Christ. I love Christ to be your life. You are deeply rooted in him. You are well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you have been taught. Look at the word. <laughs> look, look at the next word he's saying. Schools out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. My goodness, this is what we are trying to do now. <laughs> I mean, for goodness sake, 20 years, 25 years, people attend Sunday service. And they are all like, oh, now we don't have Sunday service. Oh, we are not having Sunday service. For 
goodness sake, how many years did you attend school? 12 years? How many years did you attend college? 4 years? Right? 4 years you studied engineering and then you go to the company and they say, you don't know nothing. You have to do the engineering, then only you will know the engineering. You have to do the coding, then you will know the coding. Yeah, you are sitting and listening and listening and listening and listening week after week. My goodness, school's out. Quit studying the subject. You've received Christ. Now live Him. Live Him daily. Live Him minute by minute. He is the reality. Not just a Sunday morning activity. Yeah, that's good. You know, He is the reality, not a Sunday morning activity. And let your living spill over into thanksgiving. Come with me to Colossians 3. So if you are serious, you know, we have to read Colossians 3 every day. In the message I'm reading, So if you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things which, over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. See, don't be caught up in matrix, don't, whatever is in front of you, don't be absorbed in that as though, as though that is the reality. That is not the reality. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. There you have perspective because perspective is reality. You are being seated together with him in Christ. And that has to be your reality, not just a doctrine. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. My goodness. He is your life. Christ is your life. Live Him, not live like Him. Try to imitate Him. Live for Him. No. Christ is your life. Live Him. Come with me to Passion Translation. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. My goodness. I don't know. Christ's resurrection is your I don't know whether you understand this it doesn't say Christ will raise you up it says Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too why? Christ's death is nothing but your death it's your death he died if only you understand this he did not die for you. He died your death. There is no death of his own to die because there is no sin of his own and the wages of sin is death. It's your sin he became. It's your death he died. It's your sin he became. It's your death he died. It's your sin he became. It's your death he died. For it is appointed for man to die once. And it is your death he died. So Christ died for us all. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. Say that. Oh, Malda, Rabalta, Nekel, Bushilam, Brabanti, Librehele, Kleproti. Spirit of reality. Lead us into this reality. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection too. This is why we are to earn for all that is above. For that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor and authority. Yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm. And fill your thoughts with heavenly realities. Fill your 
thoughts with heavenly realities fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life and now your true life is hidden away in God in Christ as Christ himself is seen for who he really is who you really are will also be revealed for you are now one with him in his glory I don't know if you're getting this thing Christ resurrection is your resurrection too and he your life you have been circumcised cross is the divine sword that God used to cut you off from this natural realm from Adam from the flesh and your life is hidden with God in Christ and he is your life when Christ who is our life appears we shall appear with him in glory when Christ who is our life manifests when Christ who is our life starts manifest manifesting in and through you you shall also manifest with him in glory which is the manifestation of the sons of God which is the solution of this world I'm telling you there is no solution in this world apart from manifestation of the sons of God we are supposed to stop playing church and start going after this reality and manifest as sons because that's the only solution let me tell you you know COVID-19 COVID-20 COVID-21 you know who knows what nonsense is going to come and the solution is not in man-made wisdom and if you're going to trust that if you're going to trust in all the man-made stuff you are going to die in your sin because you do not believe the reality but when you know the reality your life is hidden away with God in Christ and Christ who is your life shall manifest see uh, get back uh, to Colossians uh, 2 in message watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk they want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything that's why it's been ages since I got into an argument about theology with anyone I mean I really don't care if you don't agree absolutely okay right watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk they want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything they spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty su superstitions of spirit beings but that's not the way of Christ everything of God gets expressed in him get this thing everything see everything of God is expressed in Christ right the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily everything of God is expressed in Christ let me ask you a question everything of Christ is expressed where everything of God is expressed in Christ everything of Christ is expressed in Ecclesia the body the fullness of him who fills all in all are you getting what I am Christ is your content Christ is the content of Ecclesia Ecclesia is the e expression of Christ did you get it Christ is the content of Ecclesia and Ecclesia is the expression of Christ of 
the triune fullness is the content of Christ and Christ is the expression of the invisible father. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just like how Christ is the expression of the invisible father. You have seen me, you have seen the father. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in me. In the same way, the fullness of Christ dwells in us. As a result, fullness of Godhead dwells in us. And we become the expression of Christ to this world. And that is Ecclesia, not a Sunday morning service. God did not create a Sunday morning service. God created the body which is attached to the head, which expresses Christ as the reality to this dying world. The reality of love, light and life is the solution. What's the problem? The problem is the world doesn't have love. It's full of hatred. The world is in darkness. It doesn't have light. And the world is dying. It doesn't have life. God is love. God is light. God is life. And the full content of love, light and life, Christ. And Christ dwells in us as the hope of glory. And when we manifest him, love, light and life manifests through us, which is the solution of the world. And that is what Ecclesia is all about, not Sunday morning meetings. Sunday morning meetings doesn't do good to the world. Corona came, shut down everything, just like that, it's, it shut down Sunday morning service. Just like every other business got shut down, Sunday morning services also got shut down. Just like how businesses are opening up, Sunday morning services are opening up again. But that is not the solution that the world is looking for. The solution is in Ecclesia. The solution is in a body operating in the fullness. The solution is in a body awakening to the reality. Everything of God gets expressed in him so you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. Wow. You don't need a telescope. You don't need a microscope. You don't need a horoscope to figure out Christ. When you come to him, that fullness comes together for you to. Whoa. Christ is in you. It's not a doctrine. It is not a saying. It is not a philosophy. It is not a high thought. It is reality. Christ is a person. There is a person inside of you. There is a being, divine being, inside of you. He has got something to tell you, something to share with you, something to be for you. He is a being. He is your life. See, there is so much in the New Testament, right? It says, husband, love your wife. Is this, is this possible? Is this possible? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Is this even possible? Is anything in the New Testament possible? Keep forgiving. 70 times 7. Is anything the New Testament say? Matthew 5, 6, 7, right? Is anything possible? Living a life like that. It's not possible. It's not even difficult. It is impossible. So, husbands love your wife. So what the husband is supposed to do? Husband is supposed to turn to Christ as the reality of his life. When Christ becomes the reality of his life, he automatically ends up loving his wife in a supernatural way, which he even doesn't know. It won't be a strain. It won't be a drain on him. He'll be, no, 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 no I'm going to love you. No, 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 no. It's, no. it's going to be so natural. He is going to be surprised. His wife is going to be shocked. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Christian life is all about. It's not you like, I'm going to love like Christ. <laughs> Try and tell me how it's working for you. I'm going to live a holy life. Oh. Seven days? 14 days? 
How many days is it working for you? Boom! You fall. Oh, I'm not going to be offended hereafter. How is it working? No, why? Christ is not your reality. You're trying to live for him. You're trying to live like him. You're not allowing him to live. It's no longer I. I've been crucified. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Meaning, he lives through me. He loves through me. He touches through me. When that happens, his life starts flowing through you and it won't be a, it and you will be very sure it's not about you. I don't know whether you're able to understand what I'm saying. Colossians 2.11 in the message. Entering into this fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. Oh my goodness. Entering into this fullness is not something you try to figure out. Oh, how am I going to enter into the fullness of God? How am I going to enter into eternal life? How am I going to... You know, it's not something you figure out, you something you achieve. No, 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 no. It's all done. Christ is in you and you did not put him there and God put him in you as your life. It is not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No, you're already in. Inside us, you're already in. Not through some secret initiation rite, but rather through what Christ has already gone through for you, destroying the power of sin. See, circumcision was the, was the initiation that people had to enter in into the covenant of Abraham in the Old Testament. So when Christ came, the Jewish people were demanding the Gentiles to be circumcised. Hey, yeah, yeah, Christ died for you, they're all good, but unless you are circumcised, you cannot be still inside. So they were getting confused. That's why Paul was writing to them and saying, hey, 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 it is not through some ritual, something that you do. It's not even through baptism. It's not even through your sinner's prayer that you do. It's not even through anything that you do, you are inside. You are inside because Christ in his incarnation grabbed us all and took us to the lap of the Father. That's our reality. We wake up to that reality. We don't do anything to get in. We wake up to that reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? We wake up to that reality. Awake, arise and shine. We awake to righteousness. We awake to Christ in us. He is the mystery revealed. He is the mystery apocalypsed, meaning unveiled. If it is an initiation ritual you are after, you have already been through it by submitting to baptism. Going under the water was a burial of your old life. Coming up out of it was a resurrection. God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. See, our baptism is a reflection of what has happened to us in Christ. Our baptism doesn't do that to us. Our baptism is a reflection of what has happened to us in Christ. When you were stuck in your old sin-dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. See, this is, this is the gospel. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection. God brought you alive along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven. Slate wiped clean. The old arrest warrant cancelled. Nailed to the cross. I can go on and on and on. It's all good stuff. Right? But basically that's what it says. See, if Christ is not our life, if Christ is not our reality, we will die being sucked up in the things of this world. Uh, if Christ is not a reality, forget about community. We can, we'll never know how to love people. Forget about community. You, you won't even know as I told you how to love your wife, how to treat your child. We are losing our patience, right, with our kids. Oh, I'm telling you. Oh. Why? Why are we shouting? It's because Christ is not a reality in parenting. Honestly, 
You think Christ is not involved in your parenting? For goodness sake, he is our father. So don't you think he is the life in your parenting? So we have to live him, right? Live him, not live for him, live like him, you know, try to imitate him. No, 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 no. We have to allow Christ to live. So you have to tell when your kid is irritating you, you should tell yourself, ah, if I'm going to deal with this thing, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to trust Christ who is in me to manifest. Since he is the I am, he is the reality, he would manifest as patience at that moment. He would manifest as forgiveness in another moment with somebody else. He would manifest as generosity with somebody else. He would manifest as wisdom when somebody is coming and speaking to you with their problems. He would manifest as discernment when somebody is coming and trying to cheat you. Christ is our life. Live him. School's out. Quit studying the subject. Stop playing the church game. You've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right? Just Sunday morning, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock is not the Christian life. Christ is your life. Live him. Live him. Live him. See, that's what uh, communion is. Communion is Christ becoming the common meal. Doctor says, right, you are what you eat. If you keep eating burger, then all kind of signs show up. You, if you just keep eating beef, it shows up too. You are what you eat. Eat Christ. Christ who is your life. Eat of him. Eat of that reality. Look at, look at it like this. Okay, you're going to a hotel. They're giving you a menu card. It says this, 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 this. Uh, uh, uh. That's like Old Testament. That's like everything in the Old Testament. Every narrative in the Old Testament is like menu card. What is all available? Canaan, land flowing with milk and honey. Psalms 91 promise. Thousand may fall at your life. Da -da 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 -da. Nothing shall. Everything. In the Old Testament, it's like menu card. But you cannot enjoy it. Why? You cannot eat the menu card. Menu card points to something else. It's just a photo. It looks good. But you cannot do anything with that. Christ is the meal. Christ is the reality. Christ is the substance. He is our life. He who hath son has life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Christ is a meal. Live him. Christ is your generosity. Don't try to live by the law. Oh, I have to give so much. Oh, don't, don't, don't come under that pressure. When you allow Christ to live through you, He manifests as generosity. That's how you give. You respond to the life within you. And you give, and you give, and you give, trusting Him. And He is your supply. He is your supply. He is your supply. Yeah, He is your supply. Lift your hand and say, He is my supply. He is my life. He is my life. He is my source. He is my life. Malde rabaldana hal kudara manta la brakedele mene. Labrulina hal ki shirible de ral diriyanta da hal kadana mana hadara mana die. The reality of love and light and life. Christ is the reality of love, light and life. Christ is the reality of love, light and life. And He is in us as the reality. Hmm. 
Thank you, Jesus. So, as I told you, you know, during the newest service, I want you guys to live the life, live the love, be the light, and share the life. Don't wait for meetings. Be, be, be the community, right? Invite people. Share Christ. I love Christ to love through you. I love Christ to minister to you from others and to you, through you to others. Do that. Don't wait. Yeah, if Sunday morning gathering happens, let's enjoy that. But don't wait for that. Because you, de- you don't need to wait for anything. Christ is in you. Live the life. God bless you. See you all soon.